Hello again and welcome to Easy Peasy Pharmacology. So, on the last video we've talked about the factors that impact on the blood pressure. So, we've seen that the blood pressure is dependent on the cardiac output, which depends on the heart rate and the blood volume, and also on the systemic vascular resistance. So, if you haven't watched that video, I would recommend you to watch it because then that will be helpful to understand better uh, how the antihypertensive drugs act because basically they will always change one of these factors and ultimately they will change decrease the blood pressure. So we'll talk about five main antihypertensive drugs. We'll talk about the ACE inhibitors. Uh, we'll talk about the angiotensin receptor blockers. We'll talk about the calcium channel blockers. We'll talk about the beta blockers, the diuretics, and finally the alpha-1 receptor blockers. Uh, so let's start with AC inhibitors. So ACE inhibitors. So basically, the AC inhibitors they act uh, by blocking the transformation of angiotensin one uh, in angiotensin two. There is an enzyme responsible for this process, which is the AC enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme. Uh, and basically it will block the formation of angiotensin 2. As you may know, the angiotensin 2 is responsible for uh, vasoconstriction as well as aldosterone secretion. So it promotes aldosterone secretion. So if we are blocking the effects of the angiotensin 2, we'll have the opposite. So we'll have instead vasodilation when blocked and we'll have also less effects of aldosterone. Okay, now let's say as well and let's see, aldosterone is responsible on the kidneys for two main things. It's responsible for uh, sodium retention and it is responsible as well for potassium excretion. And when we say sodium retention, we also are talking about water retention because normally the water, it follows the salts, the sodium and chloride. Um, so if we have the opposite effect with the AC inhibitors, so we'll have sodium and also water excretion as well as potassium uh, retention will have the opposite effects. Alright, also before going further, I see inhibitors, some examples are enalapril, uh, prindopril, so all the drugs that end in pril, they are AC inhibitors. Then we'll have another, a second class of drugs which is similar to the AC inhibitors, which are the angiotensin receptor antagonists or blockers, so the ARBs. And the ARBs are basically responsible uh, to block the action of the angiotensin 2. So they will um, compete and uh, inhibit the angiotensin 2 effects. So basically the outcome is pretty same, pretty much the same as the AC inhibitors. Vasodilation, uh, reduced aldosterone, so we'll have more uh, sodium and potassium excretion and more rotation of potassium. So they are the main, main um, effects of these drugs. But they also have some side effects. So the AC inhibitors and the ARBs they can cause, as we see here, uh, hyperkalemia, high potassium. They can also cause angioedema. And specifically for AC inhibitors, they can cause a dry cough, dry persistent cough. And why does it happen? So basically, the ACE enzyme it's responsible as well uh, for the breakdown of bradykinin in the lungs. So when it's inhibited, there is no uh, breakdown of the bradykinin. So there is its accumulation in the lungs. So then the patients will suffer a dry cough. 
and the bradykinin is um, like a bronchoconstrictor and it's also a vasodilator so because it's a vasodilator and it's accumulated sometimes it's thought to help as well with the antihypertensive properties of the AC inhibitors but when that's a problem and normally that's a problem in up to 20 percent of the patients taking AC inhibitors then um, the doctor can switch it to ARB, so to angiotensin uh, receptor blockers and that's from my experience the most common um, reason why patients are put uh, in angiotensin receptor blockers because they, they've experienced some dry persistent cough with AC inhibitors. Then the next class is the uh, calcium channel blockers, so CCBs. So the calcium channel blockers, how do they act? So the calcium channel blockers, they actually block the entrance of calcium through the calcium channel receptors. So normally the extracellular uh, calcium goes into the cells through calcium channels and then once it enters the cells, then it makes, for example, uh, the muscle cells to contract. Uh, so that's pretty much it what it does. It blocks all this process. So there is muscle relaxation. There are different uh, types of uh, calcium channel blockers uh, and they can act and have their specificity for different tissues. So we have non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers and dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. So we can call them dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers and non the hydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Some examples of the first ones are, uh, for example, nifedipine and amlodipine, whilst the non dipyridine um, calcium channel blockers, they are diltiazem and verapamil. And it's very important to distinguish between these two classes because they will have very different effects. So, for example, the dihydropyridine uh, calcium channel blockers, the nifedipine and amlodipine, they act mainly on the vascular smooth muscles. So, vascular smooth muscles. So, basically, they make the cells to relax, the muscle to relax, it doesn't contract. So, vasodilation. And then we have then a lower systemic vascular resistance, so we have a lower blood pressure. Lower systemic vascular resistance, lower blood pressure. Whilst the non d um, calcium channel blockers, diltiazem and verapamil, they act more on a uh, heart level, so they can either act on the myocardium, on like the coronary vasculature, or they can also act uh, on the... Um, nodal system or nodal conduction system so basically the diltiazem it acts more on the coronary uh, vasculature so it decreases the heart rate and if the heart rate is decreased then we have the blood pressure decreased as well whilst the verapamil acts more on the nodal conduction so it blocks uh, the system that makes the heart to pump so basically reduce the heart rate, it's called the, a negative inotropic effect. So our cardiac output is reduced and our blood pressure is reduced as well. So that's pretty much uh, their uh, mechanism of action which is quite different from one to another. Then when we talk about side effects, they are also different. So for the nifedipine and amlodipine, they cause mainly vasodilation as we've seen. So the main side effects uh, are hypotension, postural hypotension, so basically if there is like a huge vasodilation uh, that is detected by, by the baroreceptors then uh, our blood pressure may drop very quickly and then people may feel like fainting or even faint uh, and also um, these drugs they can cause like uh, oedema, peripheral oedema, the patients can suffer swollen ankles, that's like a, a possible side effect with them, or even swollen gums is also a possible side effect, so it's called the gingival hyperplasia. Um, so they are the main side effects with the dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers. Then when it comes to diltiazem and verapamil that act mainly on the heart system, 
basically the main side effect is bradycardia so bradycardia the heart rate may drop too much so that's pretty much the main side effect and for verapamil it can also uh, block the entrance of calcium in the in our bowels basically in the gastrointestinal system so it can also cause constipation in a few patients so constipation